Greetings and salutations. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today I'm going to show you a nifty little tool called GRSync that is um, a little awesome utility you can use in Linux for all sorts of different things. I'm using it as a backup program and um, the reason why I'm using it is because it is the simplest, easiest way to make snapshot style incremental backups of uh, any system here uh, in the Linux platform. Now when I was running Windows I used to do this with a utility called XX Copy, and then the XX Copy utility ran in the terminal or the command line in Windows. And um, what I had to do was actually write a little batch file script type program to get it to do the backup that I wanted it to do, and which was nice because then I could just click, I could just open up a um, command line and type in backup, and the, you know, because that's what I had titled my little executable file there and it would go do it. The problem was is that it was very rigid once it was set up and if I wanted to change it I'd have to go edit the file and move things around. It's kind of a bit of a pain. When I switched over to Linux I needed a tool that would do the same thing and there are a lot of backup tools available uh, for Linux and uh, um, I pretty much uh, try to avoid the more complex ones, uh, even some of the simpler ones. Um, mainly what I want is an exact copy of whatever I've got going on the computer that I want to back up onto a, another drive, and uh, I want that to be exactly the same, and I also want to have access to it uh, down to the file. I don't want to have to open the backup utility to be able to get it. I want it to be stored in an open format where if I need to uh, restore one file or move that data elsewhere, I can. And this provides me with that util that function. Now, rsync is a standard Linux utility that is available on pretty much every Linux machine you walk up to. Uh, it's a command line utility, just like XX Copy in Windows. By by the way, XX Copy does it does not come with Windows. Uh, that's a program you have to go download and uh, get from a, a company called Pixie Lab. They allow uh, free use for personal use, but if you want to put it on a server or something like that, they want a big license fee. Rsync, of course, is open source and absolutely free and available on any Linux machine that you sit down in front of. Now. If you're kind of like me and you'd rather point and click than you would to type in a terminal to do these sorts of things, then you're really in luck because there is a wonderful front end for rsync called grsync, and you're looking at it right now. And it's very basic. Uh, just this creates the command that you would type in the terminal for rsync to go do its thing. And uh, so we'll go through the setup here a little bit. Now, what I want this to do and is just make a copy of my home folder this is my home folder right here okay and I want to make a copy of that to this drive that's WD backup right here and um, what it will do is it will uh, make an exact copy and if it's already copied a file that hasn't been changed since the last time that I did a backup, it's I want it to leave it alone. So what we're doing is an incremental backup. All right. So this is uh, what it looks like on the backup drive. And if I open the home backup folder here, uh, you'll see that there's my home folder, just like we looked at. And then there's also uh, Cindy's home folder. And so this backs up actually, actually this backs up an entire hard drive because the way I have this computer set up is that the system lives on one SSD and the home folder is on a separate SSD. So it's a completely separate drive. So what we're doing here is backing up a whole hard drive. In Linux, hard drives are represented as folders, not A, B's and C's and whatever else. So uh, grsync doesn't care whether you back up a whole drive or just one file or one folder it makes no difference to it at all okay and uh, this little thing over here is a little bit of housekeeping that the Linux system does uh, to keep up with drives and make sure it keeps its uh, files straight it's called lost and found you'll find it on all of your drives in a Linux box and uh, the general rule is don't mess with it because the system takes care of that itself uh, so anyway, that's what it looks like. So what we want to do is to set the grsync up or just rsync in such a way that we can just make a copy. Okay. And so 
this is what it looks like when you start it up and uh, start with the basic options up front. Um, we'll go through what each one does. Here is the uh, source right here and you can choose that just simply by opening this and then choosing a file off your system which uh, makes it pretty easy and then once you get something uh, get it in there uh, you can manually type in an extra slash here and basically what that tells it is, is I want everything in this folder to be uh, copied to everything in this folder see there's another slash here because here's the destination and uh, that way uh, that tells the rsync utility not to go any further back up the uh, um, chain of folders or the however you want to put that. I'm sure I'm, there's a technical term for that that I don't know. Uh, so that's how you tell it exactly what you want copied and where you want it put. And then uh, we want to preserve the time so that way it doesn't uh, change the time on the file uh, on the destination. Preserve the owner. It's owned by the same person and the uh, group permissions and the individual permissions stay the same and then down here we want to delete on destination which means that if I delete a file out of my home folder uh, and then I do a backup that it will go on and delete that file on the backup uh, because I'm telling the system don't hang on to anything if I delete it on the home folder I want it gone from the backup as well in other words we're just doing snapshots here Verbose means we're going to get some output. Skip newer means that if for some reason or other there is a file that is on the backup drive that is actually newer than the file that's in the home folder, uh, it'll just say, okay, I'm not going to mess with that and it'll leave it alone. Uh, that's kind of optional. Uh, it's uh, just, you can, you can turn that on or turn that off either way. If you were going to do an exact snapshot, I guess the best way to do it would be to turn that off just in case any uh, uh, unscrupulous data worked its way onto your backup drive and you wanted to blow it out, but I'll just leave it the way it is for now. Uh, do not leave the file system. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I think that's, uh, uh, you know, if you want to send it over a network or something like that. Show transfer pro progress, and uh, then you can also make copies in such a way that Linux files will be completely compatible with the NTFS file system. Uh, useless for me, but you might want to, uh, you know, if you were taking data and moving it over to a drive that was going to go onto a Windows machine, hey, there you go, right? Okay, uh, we'll go to advanced options next. And uh, the only thing in here uh, that uh, I bother with is uh, protect remote args. <laughs> that seems to be up by default, and I don't bother with it uh, because uh, none of this really needs to be uh, messed with. Um, you can also have this compress the file data. Uh, you can have it run checksums to make sure that it uh, uh, makes an exact copy. I found that the Linux file system, the ext4 file system itself, is, is plenty accurate enough for my purposes. And uh, you can go into each one of these and figure out what these are if you want to. I just don't bother with them. And then we have uh, the extra options. Uh, you can get it to run a command before you run rsync or, or after. Uh, mainly what you're worried about over here is that you want to run as a supervisor. You want this to run as a root user uh, because if you're copying an entire home directory, you're actually copying other people's files. So once you get all that stuff set up, it's actually quite easy to do. And then uh, I really like the fact that you get two options here. The first one is you could make an actual run. Uh, you could hit go and it would actually do it but if you're a bit paranoid about well maybe I didn't get one of these options right and you don't want to trash your file system then you always have the option to do a dry run so uh, we're gonna do a dry run just to show you how it works and it's not gonna put out much output right now because I like just did this a little while ago and then I thought hey I need to do a video about this uh, so this is what it would uh, have copied or deleted and it gives you a nice list and it tells you exactly what it was going to do and if I wanted to actually run the thing then all I would do is click here where it says uh, uh, make a full run go and then it would copy the data over from uh, my main drive in the computer to the backup drive and that's it that's really as simple as it is you can set this up to do it the way you want to do it 
Um, my main goal is just to make copies of, I want to keep a copy of the data on my machine. Some of the settings, not all of it. I'm not planning on syncing this back to another machine. Um, because if the operating system crashes or one of the drives dies and I need to, need to do it, I'll reinstall and then I'll put the files back in from the backup. Okay, um, so that's one function of this. There's also another great function which I actually use. If you uh, look over here, I have a drive that is in the machine and I'm going to mount this up and show you what's on it. It's called uh, storage and uh, this is an actual spinning hard drive. I just bought this not too long ago. got it for dirt cheap and uh, it's a small older uh, Western Digital that I got new old stock for nothing but these are very reliable drives and uh, I used them uh, for many many when they when they were first new I got a lot of these and used them not only at home not only at home but at work as well and they're good drives so I found one for cheap I stuck it in the machine and uh, basically I put the swap partition on it and then I had all this extra space and I went well there's some data here that doesn't quite fit onto my SSDs uh, so I'll dump it over here so I have a bunch of music backed up over here and uh, this is music by year and uh, this is something that's left over from my radio days back when I used to build music libraries and uh, all that kind of stuff uh, so I kinda wanna hang on to this because it's quite a resource and um, I don't use it every day but uh, there it is I keep uh, maintain uh, a copy of that um, um, those files I keep a copy of it on the backup drive too so it's available in two places it's on this storage drive and it's also on uh, the backup drive and so every now and again I like to compare the uh, two copies that I have of that particular folder to make sure that they're the same so if you look here we're comparing the uh, backup drive here the WD backup drive we're going to compare uh, that version of chart hits archive to the version that's living on the storage drive just to make sure nothing's changed just to make sure uh, a file didn't get deleted by accident or something went wrong and the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna do a dry run and I'm gonna act like I want the machine to copy it okay but we're not actually going to do it so it's going to go check here and as you can see it went and checked to make sure that all of those folders were the same and then generated no output about what it would do whether it would add delete or do anything so now we know for sure that those two folders are exactly the same and uh, what is really nice is is that um, I can take this backup drive and put it on my other Linux system and do exactly the same check I have this I have this stuff backed up in three or four different places and uh, so therefore on my laptop machine I also store it there I can double check to make sure that I have three redundant copies of the same data that's exactly the same uh, which is very cool and uh, so that's another use here now this isn't just for backups like I said if you think about any time that you need to move data from one place to the next and you need to do it folder by folder or file by file then uh, this is definitely uh, the application that you want to use to do this on the Linux platform grsync yes there are more complicated tools yes there are specific backup softwares and there's stuff that'll store it in uh, they'll store your stuff in compressed files and all that stuff not a fan I like to keep it simple straightforward and I can keep up with it so grsync is what I like where do you get grsync well it's so easy it's not even funny man we're gonna go take a look at it right now so if you are on Ubuntu if you are on Linux Mint if you are on um, pretty thing pretty much uh, any Debian distribution of Linux grsync is available and we're gonna go find it here in Mint's software uh, manager and take a look at it so you know what you're looking for as soon as Mint decides to load it up this always takes a little bit of time so we go in here and take a look and we'll do a search for grsync actually that should be enough let's see give it to me there it is grsync is right here it's available in the repos and this is the i386 version if you're running a 32-bit version of uh, 
Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Debian, whatever. Uh, so you have both options here. Of course, I'm running 64-bit, so I get the 64-bit version. And there it is. It is that simple. GRSync, great little tool. Thought I would do a little video about it. And um, big thing here before we close is that when you have external drives or drives that are not automatically mounted at boot up, like this storage drive here, I have not put that so the system automatically mounts it up because I don't use it every day. And I think it's a bit safer. That way I'm not going to be able to, uh, when I only get in here when I need it. Um, so what you need to do when you have drives like this before you move on, and especially before you unplug a USB type drive, is make sure that you come down here and you unmount the drive. And then I think for this it says safely remove or unmount one of the two. All right. And that is it. We're done. Thank you for watching the video. Talk to you again soon. Comments, suggestions, always welcome.